Hello and thank you for checking out this video. Uh, if you watched my video on my homemade router table or my um, transitioned router table, uh, I did say that I would probably be or I'd like to do a, a review of the new table saw that I got and um, I wanted it to be a positive review but unfortunately that's not going to be the case. So uh, this is um, yeah, I'm going to just kind of give you guys a review of this um, Grizzly. They did their 40th anniversary um, hybrid table saw. It's kind of the, the intermediate between the cabinet saw and the uh, contractor saw, um, which was appealing. Uh, I like the idea. Um, yeah, but yeah, we'll get into it. So yeah, let's take a look at this. So it's got the casters, I like that. Um, you know, it's, they work well. I'm gonna step, step back just a little bit. Um, so when this, when I got it, uh, it says in the manual that everything's covered in a, um, in a coating that's, you know, to prevent rust and, and everything. So everything was coated in this um, greasy, the greasy material. They said, you know, clean it off. Uh, you can use some WD-40 and um, clean that up, which I did. And they said that, uh, you know, it's on all of the non-painted material, all, all the non-painted surfaces. Uh, the problem is, is it was everywhere. Not just on the non-painted, but on painted surfaces, it was all over. And the casters came uh, all put together. So the wheels and the, you know, the mount that they're on, but also the locks that are painted and it was just everywhere. Uh, I went to put the casters on. The problem is, is they didn't think about having to secure the mount, the casters to the table and you can't get the Allen wrench in uh, on the bottom part of the caster to mount it. And so when you do that, the Allen wrench either gets stuck in there or you can't um, secure it down or you got to finagle it. I was able to finagle it and, get, and put the casters on. So that was um, a pain in the butt. I had to clean all of that grease off of everything off of there before I put it on, which was a pain because you don't want to, don't want to spray WD-40 on all the, a lot of the parts that it comes with. So I just basically had to um, just wipe the whole thing down with some some shop towels and stuff. One of the other issues was I found some random parts floating around in the box. Um, not sure where this one comes from. These two plastic pieces I'm guessing or assuming that they're from the fence, the back of the fence here because they seem like they would fit in there um, if they weren't, if the tabs weren't broken off. They have you um, mount these uh, side pieces on and they, I don't know what gauge they are. Uh, I'm not that up on my, you know, metal, metal working, stuff like that. But they're super cheap. Um, this is super thin. Uh, if you saw that video that I have, um, I, I am comparing this to my old jet that was who knows when that was built, but if you see this in the this, in the background, this is very uh, secure. There, that jet is very um, quality. This material is it, it's cheap. It's it's crappy. Um, the other thing too is they tell you that if the if it's not flat when you put it on and you get this flat here. If this is not level, you can shim it with masking tape, which I thought that was very strange, but I thought, okay, whatever. Um, but, you know, my old jet, you put the, put the rails on and you can adjust these and get them perfectly flat or perfectly level and then secure the mounts back behind or secure the bolts. This doesn't really, um, doesn't really do that. It doesn't have that option for you. Or, you know that ability so you just put this cheap plastic onto these rails 
I'm not going to get into the mounting of the rails onto this because I think that's kind of a poor design as well. Um, let's, look, let's say the next thing is my fence here. So um, you mount, this, like I said, the sides here, put those on, great. Mount the front rail. Um, get it in here and you kind of finagle it. They, they tell you to put the fence up against your blade, raise up your blade all, all the way, put the fence up and then line this up with zero and then make sure that one inch is fine and okay, all is well. And then it says secure this front piece on. I did that and then it says to switch it over to the other side and make sure that your left hang, or your left markers are lined up. Well, they weren't even close um, and you can unscrew so they tell you to loosen up these screws and adjust this. Well, the problem is, is when, after I made my right adjustment, uh, when I switched it to the left, this wasn't, mark, wasn't matching up or anywhere close. So I had to loosen up the right side and loosen up this whole front piece and move it over, which is a pain in the butt because, well, you know, my, with my back, injury and trying to climb on the floor underneath to secure those bolts was not very fun. Um, to tighten it down, loosen it up, and then tighten it down again was kind of silly, I think. Yeah, so one of the other things when you're mounting the front and the back here, um, and then the sides, they, they tell you to, um, you know, get a file or a uh, metal or a wire brush and clean up any parts that might have issues or anything like that. Well, I think, I think that's kind of silly. They should make sure that it's quality before it leaves the factory. Um, but there's a bunch of cut marks all along here, front, back, and sides. I'm not gonna file that down. That's not, I, it, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of it's, it's a big pain in the butt to file the entire thing down because they can't remove the cut marks. But it is what it is. I'm covering it up. They're aesthetic anyway. It didn't really mess with my mounting or anything like that. But the problem is, if you all, oh golly, can see here, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see this. Uh, they did not re remove any of the, the cut strokes in here. Um, I guess I can use this to file my nails. The problem is, is it's not a smooth... That's going to be a horrible sound in that video, I'm sure. Um, so, anyway, in that... All right, so just a comparison. I saw, I saw this when I was looking it up, um, and I noticed it, and I figured, oh, it's fine. Maybe I'll, I don't know, get a new one or something. But usually, you can. These will come with either a hole or just little cutouts here, that um, you can mount. Like I mount my uh, plywood onto here, so I have all my cuts, and I can make my cut adjustments, my cut marks, and. Um, it's a nice back or two for, you know, make it longer or shorter or whatever. Um, this doesn't have the, I don't know, might be a nitpicky thing, but it's just another thing that's not great. Changing my angle here so you all can see, uh, have that lighting a little bit better. So this I thought was kind of silly. Um, you're kind of in the ballpark of zero. Um, this is as far as it goes. It's not quite to zero. I mean it's pointing roughly but if you notice it's not all the way. Um, so if I change my angle here and I try and come back that's as far as it goes. So we'll take a look at the problem with that. I'm guessing I'm about zero. The problem is they're guessing wrong. Another another problem I think with this 
I don't know, maybe this is a little nitpicky, but tighten it down. I'm not, I'm not a weakling or anything. I feel like I'm tightening down pretty good. Well. But look at how, like, that doesn't tighten it down at all. That's a blade. I mean, like I said, it might be nitpicky, but I would, I would hope that if I'm cinching this down, that there's a reason for that. But apparently not. And now for the icing on the cake. So you remember when, here, let me turn my adjustment. Remember when I said that's as far as it goes? Well, if, as far as it goes is not far enough. Um, I'm gonna show you here. Okay. So I'm gonna put my angle marker all the way up here. I'm gonna switch that same angle to the other side. You guys can actually see that. I hope you can. If you can't, I'm gonna show you something else. So this is about a degree and a half off. Let's see if I can figure it out from the outside. Oh, maybe you can see it at the bottom. It's a problem when you can't even. I think maybe that's yeah. There you go. So I'm pulling it flush, and it's not going. Anyway, you know when you're doing woodworking, I think it kind of is important to be able to have your blade go to 90 degrees, but. Um, I don't think Grizzly agrees with me on that, so I don't know. Yeah, I think the bottom line is if you want something of quality, um, if you want to make 90 degree cuts, uh, if you want something that's going to you know, last longer, then I wouldn't buy this. Um, I'm highly disappointed in this. I'm kind of sad. I wish I could have afforded something higher quality. Uh, I would have bought a, di a different brand, um, something else. So I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm very, at this point, I'm just really frustrated. Um, it was a pain in the butt to put together. My back is killing me. And now I can't even make a 90 degree cut because the table saw just won't won't go that far. Um, I'm, I'll see what I can do. I don't know, but I if you're looking to buy this this one, I would completely skip it. Don't don't even stop. Just stop here. <laughs> go find go find something else. Um, I don't know. If, I've never bought anything from Grizzly before. I'm not going to buy anything from them again. So. Um, yeah, I'll stick with other brands, but it's a shame. It sucks. So, thanks for watching.